slowed with seven axles, but this one actually does not need seven axles. You see my uh, lift axle is up. It's only 57,000 pounds, but I just, you know, finally, you know, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. So forget about D rings. That's what guys just told me that, you know, you do put the thing like that right on the lip. Just push it against that, uh, you know, piece of metal over there. So see how many I have. Like, just two binders on each side, and then cross chains, and these are all uh, uh, half an inch chains. And then, of course, the boom is tied down. So I got what, one, two, three, four, eight, eight uh, tie downs, and uh, and one over here. And all my axles are down here on the trailer. Oh. That's that means it's winter, all right? Ducks are flying somewhere. So and I didn't drive it on. The guy just drove it on. See, I had some problem over here because uh, I don't have a D-ring in here. See, one is this one is too far for that chain. So I really need something another another D-ring between these. Uh, And this is a 10.6. That's my light over there. I probably don't need the light now. And these are the tarps that I had to buy. So I managed to squeeze them, uh, squeeze them here on the catwalk. So it's all good. And I'm only going like 200 kilometers. But you see, there's lots of traffic. There was that red icon top, top left. That's not good. That means there's uh, traffic on route because I have to go through Toronto. And to get this, I had to wake up at five o'clock. Uh, it's only like an hour of driving, maybe 45 minutes, but... Uh, oh, and yesterday cost me almost a hundred bucks to check all uh, 26 tires, because you know, because of the uh, cold weather. It's only, it's only minus five now Celsius, but yesterday was like minus 12 in the morning. And that's what I meant by uh, by not rushing, because this is a rush hour tra uh, time, so no reason to you know to hurry. This is uh, the junction of Highway 400 and 401 in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Well, on a straight road, the truck pulls up, uh, pulls okay. I'm at about uh, 102,000 pounds right now, gross. But yeah, on hills, of course, it you know struggles. But you know, I don't think um, any truck would be would be uh, light-footed, you know, with this with this excavator you see in my mirror. Um, and that's my average so far is 5.8 miles per gallon U.S. But that's on all miles, 36.79. And it's a beautiful day today. You know, I enjoy driving this truck. The sky is blue. It's only minus three Celsius, which is what, uh, probably 25, 27 Fahrenheit. And my cruising speed is, let me just climb this hill. Yeah, I think 60. Yeah, 60 miles an hour. Or uh, 97 can. Uh, an hour and I see my FPM sits at 1400 I'm loading this and the guy drives it on and he says uh, you hold uh, machines like this before right <laughs> and I didn't know what to tell him you know but you gotta you gotta hate when you ask questions like that you know because you don't want to appear uh, greener than you are but you don't also you don't want to do something stupid right so but why he was asking me is because 
I put a piece of wood under the under the boom where he lowered it on the trailer. And basically he was asking me if that's the position I want because of course that determines where the machine, the excavator, sits on the trailer. And so I moved it a little bit because I I just didn't know, you know, how how his boom goes down because this one has a pretty big boom. I was not sure where where it will be on the on the on the deck, you know. It's in the middle, in the middle of the trailer pretty much, of the lower deck, and that's I guess where you want it to be, to push more weight on the trailer, not away from the truck, but, you know, my, uh, my gooseneck is pretty long, so it's very easy for me to move away from the truck, move the weight away, so. So yeah, so this is just uh, basically a local delivery. But especially when it's cold, it does take a long time. So I probably I came at uh, I came to the ship around uh, 7, 7, 10 in the morning, and I was only done at about 8:45. And uh, you know because I had to deal with my flags. Oh, and then one thing I probably should have checked yesterday because it was so cold. My toolbox, the lock, got frozen. I ran out of binders, so I had to get access to the toolbox because that's where I, I, I keep my, you know, binders and, and more chains. And I tried everything. I tried pouring a little bit of gas from, you know, the one I use in my Honda. I tried, I was looking at coffee, thinking maybe I should pour some coffee. I had some hot coffee with me. Then I decided against it because then it would just freeze up, right? And I had W40, I sprayed W40, nothing. I cannot open the lock. This is $5 lock. You cannot open it, you know, you don't have binders, you cannot leave. Just every detail is really important when it's cold, you know. And I go inside, I know there's a liquid that, uh, you know, you use to unfreeze locks. I should probably, uh, if I see it at the truck stop, I'll, I'm gonna get it, but I go inside where these guys are uh, sitting, like the guys that, you know, give you the machines. And I said, uh, you wouldn't happen to have that, un you know, lock anti-freeze. He says, oh, we just use water. I said, you sure? Like, w wouldn't that just, freeze the lock you know, worse and he says no you just uh, take a real hot water and pour it in there and you know by the time it starts freezing you're already uh, gonna open it he says that's what we do usually so they gave me a kettle like very with a very long nose and very hot water and I pour it in and it opens so now of course I don't lock it I don't I don't use the key anymore because it still has the handle not gonna open but yeah these locks can be a pain in the butt in, in, in cold weather well I wanna I just stopped to check my uh, you know chains got some coffee this is a rest area in uh, Port Hope Ontario it's one of those new ones that uh, have all the amenities not just you know parking and uh, washrooms and what I want to do now is I want to change my uh, See, that's my trip two, and uh, trip two is the instant one. And when I'm gonna, I wanna reset it. Okay, and then we're gonna go here. Fuel economy, and that's my trip two, zero miles per gallon, right? And so now we're gonna track, see what it'll be from here with starting and driving, and I still have uh, 92 kilometers. 56 miles to drive so we're gonna check and see what the fuel economy will, will be on this particular stretch with this particular load and now it says plus five which cannot be right because it's very cold outside it's windy you know like the wind the chill factor wind chilled uh, factor all right and the weather is getting worse and I'm driving I'm not bothering anybody all of a sudden I hear this annoying noise at first I thought something was wrong with the engine 
you hear this annoying alarm and then I figured it it's coming from the sleeper and there was that there's a clock there and it was blinking and I tried to turn it off and that clock has an alarm and I think that's what happened because this was yesterday night it's 11 o'clock in the morning now I think I was fooling around with that thing uh, it was uh, about 11 at night and I wonder how long it's gonna it's gonna do that and I'm cruising at uh, 1350 1350 RPM and the truck has enough you know torque to climb hills so I just slowed down a little bit just to measure the fuel mileage yeah so basically it's uh, just 57 58 miles an hour I'm doing now with the cruise control on the final winter driving the roads became slippery I already saw one uh, accident, the guy flipped over and uh, was lying in the ditch and we're driving 70-80 kilometers an hour. The excavator is still on the trailer. I guess that's the good news. The, the weather is the bad news. And I'm at the Kansaini. Took a couple of hours to get here. The weather was awful. Now you see my truck is disconnected, and uh, I took off all chains. The guy already signed my paperwork. And he was kind enough to drive it off himself. Pretty big excavator, you know. It doesn't look big. putting his uh, boom down because you know these machines they, they tip real easy uh oh uh oh Fuck. bye bye baby bye 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 and that's it delivery is executed with no damages and the last thing I wanted to say is uh, I see this 4.3 miles per gallon that's my average fuel economy for the past 95 kilometers after I uh, reset my trip but there was lots of hills but I don't know but that's what it is